Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Doomkin Guide. Oh, yes, the nuclear chicken has been detected. The best spec you can play, the best class you can play, the Boomkin. I love Boomkin. So, right now, you will have a few annotations on the screen, so you can jump to different parts of the video. There'll be, I'll be talking about talents and glyphs, and also the rotation. There'll be more videos coming with gameplay, little tips, and I'm also planning to release Tot Guides, which is Throne of Thunder, tailored specifically to Moonkins, fight by fight. I'll also be releasing the Brawler's Guild, because a lot of people are like, Oh my god, Boomkins are just so bad for Brawler's Guild. It's not true, right? So I'll be releasing guides specifically tailored to Moonkins. So sit back and enjoy. So, let's go over talent. Level 15. I used to love feline swiftness because 15% movement speed increase is a DPS increase. A lot of people don't think about it that way, but boomkins, until you get a lot of crit, you're basically a turret. You just hate moving. Moving is bad. I love Displacer Beast. It's just too good. <laughs> you have 20 yard blink, even though it throws in a cat form, you can use it every 30 seconds. And let's just think about Throne of Thunder. Horridon is about to charge you and double swipe the raid. You blink right in front of his face. Nobody gets hurt. Council of Elders is probably... I'm in two minds about this. If Kazrajin is about to stomp your face, or the possessed ad, the Shadow Loa Spirit, is about to hit you. Displacer Beast is beautiful. But Feline Swiftness is also good there. Totus. If you're a turtle kicker, which I am in my raid grip, you sometimes end up in a weird spot where you just. It's not possible for you to kick the turtle. So I like Displacer Beast so I can blink behind the turtle, kick it, not wipe the raid. Acid Rain on Magira is about to hit you. And you reacted kind of slow. Displacer Beast just... Badunk! You're out of there. You're about to fall off Jikun's platform. You d use Displacer Beast. You're right under the boss. You can sniff his balls. You're happy because you're not going to fall off. Which means you can continue doing your DPS. And so on and so forth. Level 30. Nature Swiftness wins for me in every single fight. I have never raided with my balance druid with renewal or scenario ward because of one simple thing people are not robots right people are going to die people are going to take a lot of damage and when people are about to die it's as simple as this boom 120k heal you just saved someone's life it could have been a tank could have been a dps could have been a healer that's focusing on healing the tank and forgot to heal himself. That's a thing that was happening to me as a resto droid quite a bit. That's why I'm not playing resto droid anymore, by the way. <laughs> so, nature swiftness just wins 100% of the time for me. Level 45, it's kind of a fight dependent, but mostly I go with Typhoon. Knockback is just really, really good. Repositioning skills are awesome, right? CC and repositioning skills are really, really good. Think about Council, right? The Shadow Law Spray is about to hit someone, you Typhoon it away. The Blessed Law Spray is about to heal Soul the Sandcrawler, which you do not want alive. So you knock it back, Soul is dead, win-win, many loots, awesome. Fairy Swarm, for fight like Tortoise, amazing. Turtles come out, you Fairy Swarm all three of them, they're slow, they do not get out of the range of the DPS that they are killing them as fast. They can kill them much faster, which means faster boss kill. Many loots again. So, a lot of utility, level 45. Level 60, I've never used Soul of the Forest as balance. I just do not like it. it with me, is between Incarnation and Force of Nature. Incarnation goes well with fights where you need a big bloodlust. And by big bloodlust, I mean huge bloodlust. I'm talking about half a million DPS bloodlust. 
on your own. You can do that with the Druid. <laughs> if you have competent raid mates, right? You know, Stormlash Totem, Skull Banner, and Bloodlust. Oh my god. <laughs> the wet dream of every boomkin. Force of Nature is good because it's very flexible. Since you can use only two of the three tree ants, and they will slowly regain back after 20 seconds. What you can do on fights like Jinrock is when you pull, you can use two of the tree ants, and then you're certain that you will have three back when the first water comes in. So you can use half of the cooldown and then the rest, and it will come back up. So that's why I like Force of Nature. You can also, it's kind of a warlocky, kind of like warlocks now work, where you don't need to blow cooldowns at specific times. If you want to use Incarnation, you just need to use it at a specific time. Otherwise, you're just going to waste it. With Force of Nature, you can, you know, it's like, ah, I still don't have, like, all the stuff that I would like to have, you know, like procs and stuff like that. So I'm just going to use one and see what happens. If it procs along the way, I'm fine with that. So it's beautiful. Level 75, most of the time, Mighty Bash. Stun is really, really good. On fights like, let's say, Horridon, I would use Ursulog's Vortex and just keep it on the tank that's tanking the ads. Right? Because I haven't seen a tank yet that has been able to keep all the ads from one of the gates at one spot. Big meaty death ball. So this helps quite a bit. It's always good. Mighty Bash is just it's just a stun. If there is something casting something that you don't want it to cast, you can bash it because you basically don't have an interrupt. Or, you know, something is attacking someone that should not be attacked and it's stunnable, you can stun it. Level 9D Overall, with the gear that we currently have, Heart of the Wild wins. But then again, if you need a really big bloodlust, you should be using Nature's Vigil. Because it's just more bursty. And the healing is not bad. Right? You're healing 25% of your damage that you're doing, which through bloodlust is going to be a lot. Your single target damage heals people around you. And everyone just it's good although it's not as clever as I thought it is because while I was watching some fights back I was trying to figure out what I did wrong and what I could do better I <laughs> I saw some fairly ridiculous thing like nature's vigil healing the army of the dead from the death knight or hunter's pet <laughs> and stuff like that so uh ha nature's vigil I usually have it on progress where you need that little bit of healing right and it also means that over bloodlust pretty much no one has to heal they can all go f balls deep with DPS they don't have to heal you're just gonna keep it up you know you usually have a disc discipline priest he's gonna heal with you so there are two people doing ludicrous damage and healing people around them which is just beautiful but Heart of the Wild is really, it's probably one of the best cooldowns in WoW. It's as simple as that. With Heart of the Wild, you can cheese so much stuff. You can turn into a tank for 45 seconds. If you throw on Bar Skin and Might of Ursoc, you're basically a tank. You have Vengeance, you have everything. You have the armor, you have the health, you have the agility. It's really good. It is no longer beneficial to bloodlust in cat with Heart of the Wild on. It is no longer beneficial, which I'm thankful for. It was retarded if you were a feral druid cast wrath during bloodlust. It was just stupid. Right? Now they kind of made it its own thing and also you can heal incredibly like on fights like too long you pop this you're gonna heal crazy numbers you're gonna see crazy numbers which is just beautiful so 
These are the talents. Glyphs, we don't have much of a choice. I'm using Glyph of Stampede. So I can use Stampeding Raw in as a Boomkin. I'm using Glyph of Moonbeam so I can heal as a Moonkin. And Glyph of Omens, which we got and is like, meh. Might as well use it. It's probably the only balanced Glyph aside from Glyph of Moonbees that is worth even mentioning. We don't have an awful lot of Glyphs. I like to use Glyph of Grace because the it's the only one that <coughs> Alters gameplay somewhat. Aquatic form, uh, Glyph of Stars, because I have sexy, sexy gear. And I also have a spider in my shoulder pad. Can you beat that? I think not. So, this is all about talents and glyphs. And now we're gonna look at the very basic rotation of a balance droid. So, here we are with the basic Moonkin rotation. First of all, you wanna use the Astral Communion to get yourselves right. Here, 75 towards Lunar. Why? Because Lunar Eclipse is stronger on single target DPS. Solar is better for AoE, Lunar, single target. Now, if you start casting right as the tank pulls the boss, you're really late. You're too late. What you need to do is if the timer goes down, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five on four you want to fire starfall on three potion then one wrath and one boom you're right on the boss you can fire via three hands or incarnation continue starfall is about to fall off throw on your dots and cast star fires and star surges until you hit zero you want to use celestial alignment refresh your dots and continue dpsing you can see that progged again there are all the cooldowns as the Celestial Alignment is about to fall off, refresh your dots so you can have them big and meaty. Continue towards the Solar Eclipse, sorry. And continue DPSing. I don't have any procs, so I'm not going to fire off my triads. Do not refresh the dots, because they're the big meaty ones. As we're about to leave Eclipse, we're going to refresh the dots. Continue DPSing. Star Surge is off of cooldown, so we're going to cast another one. And here are the procs again. So, two more Trians, Fire of the Starfall, refresh the dots because they're really, really strong right now. And continue DPSing, and we're around 100k, which is not great. It could be much higher than that. But I'm. It's kind of. <laughs> excuses! It's kind of me just trying to talk about this. So, this is the basic idea. The rotation is fairly simple, which is good because when the rotation is complex, you can't really focus on your surroundings, right? You should be able to do the rotation blind. That's the best scenario because then you can do everything else. Now, moving as a balanced druid, it really sucks. It's not as bad as some people think. Some people just stop casting, which is just straight up bad. What you can do is move when you have instant casts, like Starfall, you're throwing up your dots, or instant star surges. So, if I need to stand here for the pull, but I need to get behind the boss as soon as possible, I can do stuff like this. I can cast Wrath, you know, open normally, refresh my dots, and I'm right here. Just waiting for that instant star surge to move the, that inch that I need. And there you go, there's nothing goes going to proc. And we can move behind the boss, like that. Right? Now, if you need to move a lot, you need to think about which Eclipse am I in. It's usually better to be in Solar, if Sunfire is better than Moonfire. And if you need to move a lot, you're going to do something like this. You're going to throw on your dots, and then you're going to keep casting the Eclipse dot all the time. Alright, I need to be moving a lot. There's another big proc, beautiful. And I still need to keep moving. Another one of those. Now it's kind of like, meh. I'm out of an Eclipse, this sucks. Now, if you're going to be moving for long periods of time, it's just bad. <clears throat> like, Mookins just hate that. Mookins, it's bad. Right, you can also fire off your tree ants on your way there somewhere, like this. But it's not really good. And if you want to be one of the cool kids, click the like and subscribe button, because that's what the cool kids do. <laughs> yes, spiffing. Mm-hmm. <laughs>